GIS and modern GIS are some of the most interesting technologies that are shaping the way we interact with our planet today. And the geospatial community is full of amazing people all around the globe. So I hope this video can help you understand what GIS is, how it's used, and how it's changing today. So you might be watching this video because you're curious about what your friend does and you know they use GIS. You might be in a GIS career and want to understand more about some of the things that are changing and evolving in the field. Or you're simply curious about GIS technology and maybe switching fields or using that technology in the work that you do. In this video, I want to accomplish a few things. One, explain the history of GIS and what GIS is and is not. Two, how is GIS evolving and how is that changing today into what we know as modern GIS? And third and finally, for those in a GIS career, I want to help you understand which path you can go down and how you can use GIS, modern GIS, and a mix of tools to accomplish and bring value to the work that you're doing. So before we talk about what GIS is, it's probably best to take a look back and learn a little bit more about the history of GIS. GIS was born out of cholera. And yeah, that may seem strange, but the first time spatial analysis was really performed was in the 1800s. In 1832, Charles Piquet created a map of Paris showing cholera epidemiology in the 48 districts of Paris. 22 years later, John Snow, no, not that John Snow, created another map in London showing households that had experienced a death from cholera and ultimately discovered the source, a contaminated water pump in the neighborhood which you can still see today along with this pub which bears his name. GIS didn't really take off until the 1960s when Roger Tomlinson created the first map-based data system in Canada for the Department of Forestry and Rural Development, which created a geospatial database for the nation's natural resources, and the country eventually created the Canada Geographic Information System, the first using the GIS namesake. Others jumped on board, such as Northwestern University, Harvard University, and the Environmental Systems Research Institute, or ESRI, which today is the leader in GIS software. Think of them the Microsoft of GIS. GRASS, Geographic Resource Analysis Support, launched in 1985 and was the first open source GIS toolkit. More on that later. GIS really started to take off in the 1990s. More governments and companies were able to access and create data needed for GIS. Into the late 2000s and early 2010s, there was an explosion in user adoption of GIS tools and data, not only with the addition of Google Maps and web mapping, but also with other tools such as PostGIS, QGIS, and others, along with many companies and startups being built to support um, these open tools. Cardo and Mapbox. Now into the 2020s, geospatial data is growing more than ever, and along with major advancements in support for GIS from cloud systems, many tools are being created leading to an ever-growing modern GIS ecosystem that is open and scalable to solve some of the world's most pressing problems. So now that we know a little bit about the history of GIS, we need to define what GIS is and is not. So I've taken a look at a lot of different definitions of GIS, and the one consistent piece that I found through all of them is that it defines GIS as the tools and systems used to create analysis from geospatial data. GIS is not the people, the community, the larger ecosystem that actually applies these tools to solve different problems. That can be broadly summed up by the geospatial community or geospatial processes or geospatial analysis. But GIS relates to the software and tools that solve these problems. When you look at geographic information systems, at the end of the day, it's the tools you use to ultimately create the outcomes that solve really important problems. Everything from climate change, to creating more efficient routes for vehicles, to finding where a new location for a fire station should be. That process is the outcome of using the GIS tools, but the knowledge and skills that you use to solve that are not GIS. That's the special sauce that we use every day to solve problems in our communities. So the second topic we want to address is, is GIS changing? And for me, that's a resounding yes. So there's really three reasons why GIS is changing today. Number one is the growth in open source development. Now, if you're not familiar with open source development, open source means that a developer or a team of developers creates a project, code, or tool that can be consumed under open license access. Now there's lots of different ways to do this, but effectively that means you can use that software free of use, as long as you don't violate the terms of that open source agreement. Additionally, data sets are being created under this open source agreement as well. So now we have lots of different tools that are using modern approaches to building technology and a larger volume of data that can be used to create new outcomes and new analysis. Following that point, data in GIS and geospatial is only getting larger and larger. Take a look at this post from LinkedIn where I talked about and tried to figure out what the largest geospatial data set was. We're talking about terabytes and petabytes of data that can be analyzed to extract lots of information to solve a wide range of problems. 
What that means is that traditional tools aren't fit to handle the volumes of these data. And the third point is that we need new roles to support these different workflows, tools, and data sets. Roles like geospatial data engineer, spatial data scientist, GIS analyst, and GIS developers that can actually work as a team to support and solve these key problems together, rather than expecting one person to solve all of them at once. So with that said, I mentioned this term modern GIS a few different times. This is a term that I've started to use mainly because I need to define what my work was for myself and help explain that because it's different than the traditional GIS toolkits that others have used, but it falls in the same relative category as GIS work. So with that said, what is modern GIS? Modern GIS is the processes, systems, and technologies used to derive insights from geospatial data. Modern GIS uses open, interoperable, and standards-based technology it can be run locally or in the cloud and can scale to work with many different types of velocities and scales of data. Now, I have a post that's in the link below that it goes very deep into the definition of modern GIS, but there's a few points I wanted to highlight in this video. The first is that it uses open and standards-based technologies. It means that nothing is a black box. It uses open technologies and languages that are found across the software development space. Things like C++, all the way up to Python, JavaScript, SQL, and others. This means that anyone that is working in these languages can easily access these tools and add geospatial workflows to their toolkit, and anyone in GIS can easily start to use these and communicate and collaborate with those teams. This brings me to my second point, which is integrated and interoperable tools. This means that there's no artificial walls, barriers, or problems preventing these two teams from working together, understanding how they work, and using the same toolkit together. The third point is scalability, and this can happen locally, which means on your laptop or computer, or in a cloud system. Now, there's no wrong way to do this. Using the same technologies on your computer or in a cloud system are perfectly fine, and it's one of the core principles. You don't need to use a cloud system. You can do this on your laptop as you need. That said, when you're ready to move through the cloud, it's using those same languages and tools. It's completely transferable, and like I said, interoperable. The cloud is there when you need it, when you're ready to scale. So the last section of this video is for those who work in GIS or want to work in GIS and want to understand, should I continue down this path of using traditional GIS tools or should I take a more modern GIS approach? Like I said, as long as you're using the tools to solve important problems, there's no wrong choice here. But my hope is to help you find out what makes the most sense for you and your career path. So I'll briefly describe what my journey looks like. About 12 years ago in 2010, I graduated. I've been trained on a traditional GIS program that I really loved and enjoyed. But what I found was that an open path worked best for me. The things that drew me to a more modern GIS approach was that all the tools were open and transparent. You understood the teams that were working on them, collaborating together, and creating new ideas. There was always something new to learn, and it was very easy to jump in and go two feet first into this amazing new community. I love the collaborative nature of the modern GIS and geospatial community. I think everyone that I talk to is really willing to collaborate, learn from each other, and help those who want to advance their journey. I think it's an amazing space to jump in and learn some different tools and techniques. The skills required for modern GIS with languages like Python, JavaScript, SQL, and others are highly in demand in the jobs workspace. So building that base of languages is really important. It can help you scale and grow outside of your GIS career path. Now, what are the challenges with modern GIS? Currently, there's no clear learning path for learning modern GIS. There are lots of tools and resources, but there's no one path to say, if you wanna learn modern GIS, do A, B, C, and D. This has been one challenge I've tried to take on. You can check out this video for more information on how I would approach this and how I would use different tools to start to build a modern GIS toolkit. Second is that if you don't have a technical or programming background, this can seem really daunting. To do this, the best way to do it is to jump in and practice. I will say this, you will try, you will fail, you will get stuck, but you will learn. Everyone that I've worked with and discussed with and learned from has had these same moments. Get started and try, and I guarantee you, after some stumbles along the way, you will be successful and add these technical tools to your toolkit. Anyone can learn programming from modern GIS. And most importantly, I think that you have to map this for your career and your goals. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What problems do you want to solve? 
is modern GIS right for this? Can it help you grow and scale? Will it put you in position to do the things that you want? Be implicit about mapping out your career goals and making sure that this approach works best for the things that you want to accomplish. I think that's incredibly important and one key area that everyone should be doing as they map their chart along a GIS or geospatial career. So if you've made it this far, I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you're hitting challenges with in modern GIS? What do you want to do with GIS or geospatial? And what are some of the things that you're working on? Let me know below and I hope to make some future videos to discuss these topics and more.